I'm a scientist with uh, Kaijin um, Bioinformatics and I will be presenting to you a case study on characterizing the microbiome by amplicon sequencing. So uh, the outline for my presentation will be an introduction to the case study we have chosen and a brief uh, uh, introduction to the experimental design and the data analysis that we have done on these uh, before moving on to the results section. So um, the, the case study we have chosen is called Life in the Leaf Litter, Novel Insights into Community Dynamics of Bacteria and Fungi During Litter Decomposition. So this study was published uh, by Pira Hong and co-workers last year in the Journal of uh, Molecular Ecology. So when you look at uh, the biological decomposition of plant material, you find that this is a very dynamic process uh, and the, the different types of compounds in the plant material will decompose in different stages. And as a result of that, the composition of the nutrients in the plant material will change uh, continuously. Therefore, you will also see uh, successional changes in the bacterial and fungal communities. So traditionally, uh, fungi has been assumed to play the main role in, in uh, biological decomposition of plant material. Uh, and the role of bacteria is, uh, is somewhat debated. And some believe that they are there to provide micronutrients for the fungi. Some believe they are simple colonizers. And then yet other uh, believe that they co-occur and interact with the fungi. So what this study is, is a, a very detailed analysis of the interaction and dynamics of uh, bacterial and fungal communities. So the reason uh, why we chose this study is because it would give us the opportunities to see how well our tools would perform on different types of amplicon data. And also because in, in one of our very recent uh, releases of the microbial genomics module, we have updated the OTU clustering tool, so we can now also uh, cluster reads of variant length, uh, which is of uh, particular interest when analyzing fungal ITS sequences that vary considerably in length. So what the authors did was that they collected freshly fallen beech leaves and air dried them. So they were collected in the Heinrich Dunn Biodiversity Exploratory, which is a big site in central Germany. Uh, part of the, uh, of the exploratory is the Heinrich National Park. And the site uh, is consisted of uh, unmanaged, uh, either pure or mixed beech forest. So after air drying the leaves, they put 10 grams into each of 15 uh, nylon bags. And then in uh, November, when the, um, when the little fall period had ended, they placed the bags on the forest test site. And then they retrieved the bags on five different sampling dates. And on each date, they collected three replicates. So for the first sampling date, they collected in February after 89 days. Uh, they collected in May after 180 days, in August after 284 days, in November after 362 days, and then in March the following year after a total of 473 days. So they amplified the V3 to V5 region of the 16 s ribosomal RNA gene, and the, the, the region spanning from ITS1 to ITS2 of the internal transcribed spaces region of the fungal ribosomal RNA gene. They used uh, a 454 technology to sequence the, the amplicons, which had an average length of uh, 560 nucleotides. So this is how our complete uh, data analysis workflow looks like. Uh, so obviously you start by importing your data. Um, There it was. Okay, so after importing your data, uh, you create what we call a result metadata table. So this is basically a table where you specify your raw reads, you specify your sample metadata, 
and then the two are linked. So the software will, the, will hereafter connect all uh, data results to both your raw reads and your metadata. So this is a very convenient way of keeping track of all your data in one table. Uh, then we ran our data QC and OTU clustering workflow. So this workflow is, uh, is pre-configured and as you can see up here, uh, it will perform trimming of the sequences, so both trimming of the adapters and uh, trimming on uh, base call quality. Uh, then the samples are filtered based on the number of reads, and for this case study, um, all samples were included for further analysis. And then the final step is the OTU clustering. So even though this workflow is pre-configured, you can adjust all parameters to fit your specific datasets. So the result of, uh, of this uh, workflow is an abundance table um, with both the, the absolute numbers and the relative abundances and all the related graphics. So from this abundance table, you can do several things. You can estimate the alpha and beta diversities. Uh, and for this, we also have a pre-configured uh, workflow, which will start by um, removing the OTUs with uh, low abundance. It will align the OTUs using muscle, and then it will calculate the maximum likelihood phylogeny. And from this, the alpha and the beta diversity is then estimated. So the results from, from this workflow will be two reports, uh, one on the alpha diversity uh, and the related diversity plots, and a report on the beta diversity and the related PCOA plots. So another thing you can do from the abundance table is you can calculate the differential abundance. Uh, and this tool will output a table uh, with the fold change and the related statistics for comparing any two samples in your dataset. So if we start by looking at the results for the bacteria communities, so we clustered data at 97% identity <laughs> against the silver reference database. And this resulted in uh, 14 phyla and 231 genera. Um, the top three phyla that we detected were the proteobacteria that accounted for 55% of the reads, actinobacteria accounted for 25% of the reads, and the bacteroidetes accounted for 16% of the reads. So if we dig a little deeper into the data and look at the family level, we can clearly see that during the early stages, so down here, you have the different sampling dates. And remember, there were three replicates for each sample. Uh, so these every three replicates have been aggregated into one column. So if you look at the, at the earlier sampling dates, you can see that there is a, a distinct community in these samples when you compare them to the later dates, where it's dominated by a different uh, set of um, of bacterial families. If we look at the bacterial richness, you can see that uh, from this plot that it varies quite considerably over time and we find a, a lower diversity in the earlier stages of the, of the decomposition compared to the later stages of the decomposition. From the beta diversity plots, we see clearly separate communities in the early stages and the later stages of the decomposition of the leaves. We then went on to look at the differential abundance. And uh, for simplicity, I'm only showing you here uh, the comparison between day 0 and day 473, which was the last sampling point in the data set. So if we look at the genera that represent more than 1% of the relative abundance, we find that 18 of uh, 20 genera are differentially represented, ranging from uh, more than an 800-fold reduction in abundance to a 1,200-fold increase in relative abundance. So this is visualized on this heat map, and you should just be aware here, because this is uh, clustering according to phylogeny, that day zero is on the first uh, column, whereas uh, day uh, 473 is in the middle here, in column 4, when you the comparison. So as you can see, uh, for streptomyces here, we found that this, the, the relative abundance of the streptomyces uh, was um, increased by 1200 fold, uh, comparing these two time points. 
um, at the other end, we can see that the Haemonobacter had an 800-fold reduction in the relative abundance. If we then move on to look at the fungal communities, uh, we cluster a read using the dynamic version of the UNITE reference database, and we found reads to cluster into three phyla and 75 genera. So the Ascomycota dominated and recounted for 65% of the reads, and the Basidiomycota accounted for 35% of the reads. So as you can see from this bar chart, it's, it's very clear that the Ascomycota dominate at the earlier stages, whereas as the, uh, as the decomposition progresses, the, Bici the Basidiomycota dominate at the later stages. If we look at family level, uh, we can see a clear distinction. Uh, here at the earlier stages, we find that the Heliotalus dominate very clearly. Then we also see here that we have sort of a middle stage where fungi from the order of the Silarealis dominate. And then finally, we have in the later stages yet a different uh, community profile. Also for the fungal communities, we see that, uh, that the richness is much lower in the earlier stages and then increases as the decomposition progresses and we find the highest diversity at day 473. Again, there is a clear separation of the, uh, of the fungal communities with regard to the earlier and the later stages of the decomposition. If we look at the differential abundance and compare day zero versus day 473, um, and look at the genera that represent more than 1% of the relative abundance, we find that 10 out of 13 genera are differentially expressed or <laughs> differentially represented. Uh, ranging from a 1,200-fold reduction in abundance to more than an 8,000-fold increase in relative abundance. So on the, uh, on the heat map, we have again day zero on the first column, and here we have day 473 on the uh, rightmost column here. Um, we have down here the, the genus of uh, Liviota, Mycena, and Adipus, which we found to be very highly uh, uh, increase in the relative abundance over time when comparing these two uh, sampling times. So when we talk about uh, decomposition of plant material, we can, um, we can split it into phases, uh, where we have an early phase um, composing of the the leaching and the degradation of soluble and low molecular weight compounds. Then we have an intermediate phase where degradation of the most accessible carbohydrates occur. And these are compounds such as hemicellulose and cellulose. And then we have a final phase uh, where the degradation of the more recalcitrant compounds occur. And this could be compounds such as lignin. So if we compare these uh, different phases uh, to the, the microbial community profiles that we have found, uh, we can see that uh, in the early stages of the decomposition, where the levels of hemicellulose and cellulose are high, we found the Ascomycetes fungi to be very dominant. And, and these types of fungi are, are well known to be decomposers of hemicellulose and cellulose. And then as the decomposition progresses and the, the levels of lignin increases, we see a shift in the community to be composed mainly of the Basidiomycetes. And interestingly, you find here that um, members of the genus uh, Libiota and Mycena were extremely um, uh, upregulated in their um, relative abundance. Uh, and these two um, fungi are well known to be decomposers of lignin. So, fungi has been assumed to be the main decomposers of plant material, but uh, recent results indicate that bacteria also contribute significantly to the decomposition process. And uh, numerous bacteria has been able to, or has been described to be able to degrade uh, cellulose. And a recent uh, genome analysis have shown the presence of genes that encode potential cellulases 
in the genomes of bacteria that cover uh, nearly all of the major uh, phyla. Um, so many of the bacteria that we find in the earlier stages of um, the decomposition are some of these bacteria that have been proven to be able to degrade uh, cellulose. And then as the decomposition uh, progresses, we find a shift in the bacterial community to be composed of mainly Bradyrhizobium and Streptomyces. And Streptomyces is one of those bacterial, uh, bacterial genera that are known to be able to decompose uh, lignin. So to summarize, what, what we really see here is that as the decomposition progresses and the, and the nutrients in the, in the material changes, we also see a change in the microbial communities, both on the fungal and on the bacterial side. So to, to finalize this, um, amplicon sequencing is a, is a powerful tool for studying microbial communities and combining different types of amplicon data will broaden the biological insights into your, into your samples. And we also see that analysis from raw reads to community profiles can be done in relatively few steps. So with that I will finish off and take any questions. Kyogen. Sample to insight.